Hi everyone, I'm Susan Jacob and in this video I'm going to show you white cataract phaco emulsification and various techniques to do so. So the problems that you can face in white cataract are uh, one is uh, rexis and this is because the anterior capsule may be thin and fragile or fibrous and the internal lenticular pressure is often increased and uh, this makes the anterior capsule convex and thereby increases the risk of a rexis run out. So you can see what I did in this case was start the rexis out small so that I have enough uh, space to retrieve the rexis even if it does show some tendency to run out and then I spiral it around and therefore this helps me to control the rexis to a final size that I desire. I also always keep the anterior chamber pressurized. This can be done by using a high molecular weight viscoelastic as well as by performing the rexes using a micro forceps through the side port. Now when performing a horizontal chop for white cataracts, it should be remembered that the cataract fills up the capsula bag almost completely and therefore inserting the horizontal chopper into the space under the anterior capsule should be done carefully, taking care not to damage the capsular zonular uh, complex inadvertently. The nucleus is embedded firmly into with the phaco tip and the horizontal chopper is uh, a blunt tip chopper. The one I'm using here is a Chang modified microfinger. I have no financial interest and what I do is take it gently around the equator of the nucleus and then bring it forwards towards the phaco probe to be able to horizontally chop the nucleus into pieces. So what you also do is chop it into uh, small pieces and remove most of the pieces within the capsula bag while the majority of the remaining nucleus is still holding the capsula bag open. But uh, once you are down to the last pieces you work more anteriorly since uh, there is not much cortex or epinucleus for these cataracts and therefore the capsular bag is floppy and can come forwards and get caught in a post occlusion surge if one is not careful while the last fragments of the nucleus are being removed. Cortex aspiration is finally done and this is followed by intraocular lens implantation. Uh, it is uh, important to remove all the viscoelastic as uh, normally done and if uh, a white cataract is emulsified well you can see that you get very good results immediately. So in this video I will demonstrate a vertical chop uh, for this white cataract. Again uh, you can see that I stain the anterior capsule with trepan blue and uh, then go ahead and create a partial entry into the anterior chamber and once that is done the trepan blue is washed out and viscoelastic is instilled into the anterior chamber to uh, counter the increased intralenticular pressure. So you can see that as soon as I made that first nick milky fluid has come out and I stop to aspirate the milky fluid out and actually go into the substance of the lens to aspirate more of it and also gently rock the nucleus so that any further milky fluid that's trapped is also aspirated out. This helps in decreasing the increased intralenticular pressure and gives you more control over your subsequent rexes. Since I was finding difficulty continuing it with the 26 gauge uh, cystitome, I changed over to a micro forceps and this gives me very good control uh, in this case I have created a capsular excess of the desired diameter however you could also uh, spiral out your excess as shown in the previous video in case you feel that you might inadvertently get a, a radial uh, capsular excess extension Again, I'm doing very gentle multi-quadrant focal hydrodissection, taking care not to inject too much fluid which could cause a capsular blowout as there isn't much space and the nucleus fills up almost the entire capsular bag. I also noticed uh, that the capsular excess was actually incomplete so I used a forceps to complete that and now it's time to do the vertical chop in this case. As you can see this is a long sharp uh, pointed uh, chopper. I embed uh, the nucleus with the phaco tip and go directly uh, next to the phaco tip and create a lateral separation movement and thereby uh, to perform a vertical chop. White cataracts are generally brittle and they are easy to chop unlike the uh, hard brown cataracts which are more leathery and difficult to separate. So in this case what I do is uh, chop the nucleus into smaller fragments and you can see that as I said previously while the bulk of the nucleus is still holding the rest of the capsular bag uh, open I can safely go and emulsify these smaller pieces uh, in the capsular bag but once I start uh, getting down to the last pieces I need to start working more anteriorly and need to always be on the lookout for a post occlusion surge which could uh, cause the lax and floppy posterior capsule to suddenly move into the phaco tip. 
dip and cause a posterior capsular rupture this is also because there is no epinucleus that actually holds the uh, posterior capsule back in these cases and uh, also because the zonules may also be weak lost chip should also be always looked for in these cases as there was one that was just seen below the incision and uh, the cortex removal should be done with care you can see that here while i'm trying to uh, go behind that little bit of cortex that's there uh, in the sub incisional area i accidentally uh, actually catch the capsular phonix and if you watch there you can see the phonix of the bag in this case you should immediately reflux and uh, leave the capsular uh, phonix and then proceed carefully with surgery taking care that the zonal dialysis uh, does not occur so uh, the capsular bag is finally inflated well and the uh, iul is injected taking care that the iul is directed towards the phonesis of the capsular bag so that it does not snag on the lax uh, and floppy posterior capsule and create a zonal dialysis again the post operative day one appearance showing very good and clear cornea a uh, white cataract again uh, where i'm doing a vertical chop using a short uh, sharp chopper this time this can also be done this is the agarwal chopper that i'm using here again i have no financial interest in this product you can see that uh, what i'm doing is initiating the rexus with a 26 gauge needle there is no milky fluid here however uh, the intraventricular pressure uh, can still be raised in these cases and therefore it's often wise to uh, move to a, a rexus micro forceps rather than try and continue with a cystotome one also always needs to keep the option of uh, converting to a uh, extra capsular cataract extraction if required i am therefore uh, performing a large enough rexus in case i do need to convert to an extra capsular cataract uh, extraction technique and in which case i could easily dial the nucleus out of a large enough rexus uh, either the intact rexus or after creating two relaxing cuts on the rexus Again a gentle multi quadrant uh, focal hydro dissection and gentle rocking of the nucleus to release the fluid before for any further hydro dissection is done viscoelastic is installed and as in these cases you expect more energy to be used than in softer cataracts you would use a dispersive viscoelastic to coat the corneal endothelium So here again you can see me doing uh, the vertical chop with the smaller sh sharp chopper and this is also possible however you may want to do more of lateral separation in this case by going deeper and deeper into the first initial crack that's created so that the crack propagates throughout the entire thickness of the nucleus Again uh, all the precautions that I've mentioned previously are taken and uh, there is generally very very little cortex in these cases and this can generally be easily removed The capsule polishing mode may also very effectively be used to remove any stubborn wisps of cortex. So uh, once the cortex aspiration is done, you are ready to uh, inject the uh, intraocular lens into the bag. And uh, as I said previously, since white cataracts are generally brittle, these can easily be removed, and you generally get very good results. I do hope you enjoyed watching this video. For uh, this video and more learning videos on phaco emulsification, as well as learning videos for more complex cases, do watch my YouTube channel that goes by my name. Thank you so much.